In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to emboss uh, information onto a dental model. Um, typically, this information is just going to be the patient's name, doctor's name, the date uh, the model was printed or uh, the impression was taken, um, pretty much any of that type of information. Um, another application would be for uh, anyone doing clear aligner therapy. Um, you potentially need to keep track and organize uh, those models. So um, numbering and labeling them is actually pretty important for that. So this is a, a good tool to know about. Um, I think someone's already mentioned that it uh, can be done in uh, an application called 3D Builder. Um, it comes with Windows 10. Um, it's really easy to do it in that. I think someone actually has a video on that or has shown how to do that. Um, and that's how I typically have done it in the past. Um, but if you're going to be in Mesh Mixer, uh, why not learn how to do it uh, in Mesh Mixer? So I'm going to show that here. Um, basically, it's uh, it's really straightforward. Um, I'm going to come over here to an area where I'm going to uh, want the text to be. Um, I think this area right here looks pretty good. I'm going to come over to my Sculpt tool. And I'm going to go over to Surface. I'm going to use the stencil. That's um, the, the, main, uh, the main tool we'll be using here. Um, I've already preloaded uh, some of the custom ones that I want to do already. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to load one, but I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. So this first one here is just some text. And it would be the patient's name. And really, what it's doing is... Uh, in that circle that's there, there's actually a square that is um, circumscribed within the circle. Um, and that square, that, that perfect square, uh, right in the middle of that square is where I have my text. So in my mind's eye, I'm just kind of envisioning where that square is and right in the middle of where that is. And I'm just trying to line it up right where I want it to be. Um, Go ahead, and once I get it where I feel like and the size and everything like that, the width of it looks appropriate, I'm just going to single left click. And then there we have it. <clears throat> Patient information um, embossed to the model. And in this case, it is coming out um, of the model. It's projecting out, but uh, it's very simple. If it, hit Control Z and just undo that. Now, instead of just clicking, if I hold control down and then click now it's uh, kind of gone into the model there so you can do it either way and uh, that's pretty awesome that it's so easy to do um, either way in mesh mixer so that's basically it um, that's the the way you can do it and more than likely this is going to work for everyone straight off the bat um, if with this type of model um, anytime you you have a like a high resolution model like a dental model um, this should work pretty well straight off the bat. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this, and, and it looks okay. And this would definitely be fine for 3D printing. Um, and it's got everything we need, so pretty much just stop there. But you can get this to look a whole lot better. Um, this is just without modifying any of the uh, underlying mesh density, uh, just kind of right off the gate using the stencil, and that's pretty much fine for me. So. Um, that's where I would probably keep it, but it can be better. Um, you can get a better resolution uh, there. So I'm just going to kind of wheel this over and show you what it looks like at a higher resolution. So on this side, I have uh, pre-done this. And as you can see, you can get this just way, way cleaner. Um, you just have to do a couple more steps, and I'll show you how to do that. But it's mainly uh, more applicable for embossing logos and images and things like that. So that's a that's a kind of a separate video, um, and that will be next. So I will I'll show you how to do it um, in that video. Um, but suffice it to say, it's it's pretty easy to do, and as you can see, it's much much uh, cleaner. And then also one other thing that's uh, you can do once it's a higher resolution in that little segment is I can get much more text in, um, you know, in a wider wider span there. Um, you kind of got to be careful. Um, the smaller you get, the less likely it will come out on the on the 3D printer, because um, we're getting pretty small here. I mean, this is literally all the size of a molar, pretty much. So 
You gotta be a little careful, but I'm pretty sure all that would right there. Um, one other unique advantage or, or application to doing this embossing would be, I mean, if I was doing the clear liner therapy myself, I would definitely do a light little stamp right on kind of an inconspicuous area, maybe like one of the last molars or something like that. Um, and I would just drop, you know, the tray information. I would maybe drop a logo on the other side um, just to make it look really cool. Um, or, or just at very least the tray information. So, you know, the patient knows which one it is, doctor knows which one it is, and it's, uh, you know, just a lot easier that way. Um, when you, when you suck down on this model, uh, I'm, I'm almost certain, um, that's gonna, that's gonna show up just fine. Um, it's not gonna interfere, you know, with any of the movement or anything like that. Um, uh, really, and I don't think it's gonna, you know, uh, bug the mucosa on the buccal side there or anything like that. It's just too small and too smooth for that to matter. But, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a, that would be an awesome application. And I, and I would, uh, pretty much think that would be the, the standard of care coming up here for a lot of these guys doing the clear liner therapy. You kind of want to make it your own anyway. So that would be a, a good way to do it. Um, moving on, just kind of giving you a sneak peek here of, of what's possible with, uh, you know, high resolution uh, embossing on, on something as small as a dental model. I'm going to rotate this around one further and just to kind of just show you what's possible. Recenter this too. Hit C to recenter and just kind of swing it around. There you got it. Tupac on a molar. You know, I mean, all I did was just Google for an image and kind of converted it, did a little bit of background stuff there. Um, but really, I mean, you can get something, you can get images, photos, anything, uh, pretty high resolution on something as small as the size of a molar. So that's just kind of demonstrating what's possible. Uh, that's pretty, pretty funny and pretty amazing at the same time. Um, okay. And so kind of just quickly, I'll show you how I go through my, uh, my workflow for doing this. It, you know, anything that, um, is going to be something that you're going to be doing on a regular basis. It needs to be something that's not going to take a lot of time. Otherwise, it's pointless to even do it. Um, I feel like this is something that works pretty well and only takes just a couple seconds. So um, I'm going to show you how I do it. Try to do it live here and hopefully nothing screws up. Um, the Basically, you need any paint program, but the one I use is uh, called paint.net. I'm going to go ahead and just open that up right now. And those are all the, the images I have uh, open right now. This is the look. This is one of the uh, embossment or embossing features I was uh, doing before. So I'm just going to control all, control A, select everything, copy that, and create a new uh, document, basically just for the same size. As you notice, it's square. Um, I think it said 500 by 500 pixels. Um, the background is white here. I'm going to add one more layer. Actually, you don't even have to do that. It's just getting too complicated, so I'm just going to delete that. You don't even have to do that. Um, just the background here, I want it to be black. Um, so I'm just going to fill that black. I'm going to get my text tool, and I'm going to use a gray. You can use white uh, or any lighter color, but and I'll show you why in just a sec here too, but I'm going to use gray, and I'm going to type in live test, and it's kind of telling you about that mind's eye thing earlier. This is what I was envisioning. Um, I'm going to put it right in the middle there. And I'm just going to go File, Save As. Uh, we want it to be a PNG. Uh, I think it'd be a JPEG too, but I'm going to do PNG. And we're going to say Live Test, Save. And all the defaults good there. And OK. So go back to Mesh Mixer and come over here. And this is going kind of slow here because I got, you know, a fairly high resolution uh, image embossed on that, uh, on the backside of that model there. So it's just uh, a lot of triangles back there. And OK, so now um, I'm going to go to my stencil. I want to add one. I'm going to go to the directory where I, I created that. and 
where is it? There it is right there, live test.png. Black background is transparent, and the, uh, the lighter text is what pops up. So I'm going to go OK, open. Um, once you've imported it, it's there now, but then you got to go up and select it again. So I've imported it, I come up here, and then I click on it and select it. So now I have that uh, text selected. Um, important, important things to notice here, um, the brush that I'm using. It needs to be max or draw max. Um, fall off, it needs to be uh, the square one, constant. Um, down here at the, uh, at the, uh, on the properties, this is all important too. Um, the strength you can play with a little bit, but I like it at 50 when I'm using the, the gray for the text. Um, the size is totally dependent on how big you need it. Um, laziness down to zero. You don't need symmetry. We don't need flow. Um, refinement, you do want checked on. You want refinement up all the way. Reduce down to nothing. Smooth up all the way. Adaptivity up all the way. And there's nothing on the filters. Um, so make sure you have all those settings exactly like I do. And I'm just going to line this up kind of right behind the uh, centrals. And I don't know, it looks pretty much wide enough. And I'm just going to single left click. And there we go. We have that text embossed on that model. And, uh, you know, it only took a couple seconds, really. And then if you're doing this a lot or, you know, if you had like a kind of like a protocol or a workflow going, you could basically just kind of have someone generating these little, you know, uh, these little squares uh, with the patient information on it. And it just takes two seconds. Um, and then, yeah, and then you got it ready to go and you load it in and, and just uh, kind of stamp it right on the model. Um, so uh, hopefully that is informative and will help everyone out there. And uh, have a, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, until next time.